Hello walkers and welcome to Wallace, Idaho. Uh, I've known, we've driven through Wallace quite a bit uh, and I'm going to sort of tell you all about it here in just a second. It is the, it's about a Wednesday uh, mid-August, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius and this is kind of the main, this is called Bank Street and Fifth Street and let me give you a little details here. My name is Henry. I will be your proxy walker today, as always, your virtual travel guide on this virtual walking tour of Wallace, Idaho. And uh, I'll flip you around now. I'll try to flip you around. There we go. <clears throat> uh, so like, subscribe, comment, love your comments. Uh, all that fun stuff that YouTube helps the YouTube channel out. Uh, here's this cool uh, saddled elk and taxidermy shop guns, surfboards, all that fun stuff. Um, so Wallace, Idaho, we've driven through here quite a bit on our way west. It's right on I-90, Interstate 90. Um, and it is a historic mining town in Shoshone or Shoshone County in the panhandle of Idaho. Um, it's a historic mining town as we pass some music from coming upstairs there. Uh, and it's got a lot of cool stuff. So most of what I learned about Wallace, or know about Wallace, I learned from, I think it's Timothy Egan's book, The Big Burn, about the 1910 forest fire. Currently, the Dixie Fire in California has burned about 600,000 acres. It's been just cranking along, kicking smoke all the way out to the East Coast. The Big Burn of 1910 burned three million acres. That's four, over 4,000 square miles. Um, so keep that in mind as we walk around. One third of the town burned down and the book uh, tells quite a dramatic story of people uh, basically escaping on the train line that came through here as fire and smoke and debris rained down on them. Um, this is a lot of cool stories here. And then uh, got a trolley tour from the mining Silver Mine Museum, Traveling Mill, and the boys are uh, taking that tour in a little while. Cool old building. Another interesting fact about the town here is, I sort of show you, we really are nestled in, in, the, um, in these mountains. And you can imagine, the, t the book talks about the fire coming down into town and people trying to make a run for it. And, you don't really get the idea or the sense of how ominous that was, as I believe it came down from that direction, sweeping down in here, sparks and burning stuff falling from the sky as we cross 6th Street here on the Harry F. Magnuson Way. Um, just really uh, apocalyptic. Of course, back then the population was in the thousands uh, big mining town, big uh, lim lumber town. Today, the population is about a little under 800, according to Wikipedia, my other source for today's walk. Um, they do have a brewery that we're probably going to try out later. I think, oh yeah, historic Wallace Brewery. Here we go. Um, you can see I-90 up on that elevated highway up ahead. <clears throat> and of course, there are hundreds of fires burning right now all over the area this summer. Wallace Brewing. I have to try that out a little later. I think this is a fire rig here. Hi there. From Arizona. So as fires come up, different fire um, organizations will travel all over the country helping each other out. Love these old turn of the century buildings. I'm going to pop out here in the road just to give you a better idea of what they look like, a better view. If you have any questions or comments about Wallace, stuff that I missed, stuff that I get wrong, um, please, in the comments, in the YouTube comments, please let us know. I'll do my best to answer those. I do read all the comments that YouTube lets through. So um, I love interacting with you guys. As I say, it's one of my favorite things to do one of my favorite parts of this channel. All right, we're coming up on 7th. 
end. We're going to cut over a block. A lot of times we'll do, I'll do this, I'll go down and I will double back if it doesn't work out, but it's kind of interesting to see this steep road leading up to these neighborhoods, these houses perched on the side of this mountain here. Coming up on Hotel Street. Now, one of the other interesting facts, I was gonna tell you this earlier, uh, prostitution was decriminalized until 1991. Uh, local residents apparently felt that it lessened the likelihood of sex crimes, sexual assault. Uh, it was a rough and tumble mining town until re relatively recently, and it still is, I think, uh, based around extraction, uh, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of mines and timbering, but we have seven plus billion people on this planet. We need things to make our modern society run. And so they are a necessary part of society. Um, <clears throat> that said, that's kind of the end of my little... <laughs> people get quite upset when I start talking about that stuff. Some people. Um, anyway, uh, I will say this, that those things can be done responsibly. And uh, especially when it's from public lands that we all take ownership of. So this is, I believe, the county building. And so that's the public safety facility over there, which looks also like the sheriff's department. So for you, those of you not familiar with uh, the U.S. system, uh, municipalities will also have a, often have a police department, and then a, at the county level, which is a sub-classification or a subsection of states, most states, uh, I think Louisiana uses parishes. Anyway, um, counties have sheriffs, and sheriffs are the sheriff himself or herself is usually elected, uh, whereas uh, their deputies are hired. You can get some guns here, have some pistols, assault rifles, all the fun stuff. Uh, the Panhandle of Idaho is kind of known, at least I know it, for uh, being very pro-gun. <clears throat> got harvest foods up here you can see the highways elevated kind of an engineering marvel there to have thousands of tons of vehicles going over every day pounding away and yet it stays there again <laughs> result ultimately of extractive industries um, Part of that society that requires them. I'm gonna go back here because that's kind of cool looking vehicles. This is Harvest Foods. Obviously with a population of 800, um, Wallace is not a big town. But we're gonna wander around and see what we can see. So this is Hotel Street again. You can see those mountains jutting up right outside of town. Kind of a neat old building over there, sweet van, and then some sweet fire uh, vehicles over here. And we'll loop around and head in the, back in the other direction in a minute. So this is kind of interesting. These are um, some firewood oh, and then those arches are drills for mining, mining drills. Shoshone County Volunteer Fire. Very cool vehicles. Northwest Mine 
supply. So the big, um, the big load or ore that was taken out of here was mainly silver. They did find some gold back in the day. Um, in 1860s, a guy named Mullen created the Mullen Road through here. And, and then, but they didn't really find gold and silver until the 1880s. That's the off-ramp from I-90. One of the cool things that I think comes through here, it may go around, but um, is the trail of the Coeur d'Alene's, which is a paved bike path. And I think, in fact, nope, it does come through here because I see a couple of bicyclists. We're gonna go check it out, um, coming through here. And I think it goes all the way down to Lake Coeur d'Alene from up at, Mount Lookout Pass, I think that's what it is. And in the other direction is the Trail of the Hiawatha, which is another very well-known bike path. In fact, you can rent bikes and get a shuttle Hi there, um, and go over these, through these tunnels and through the, um, over trestle bridges and all sorts of fun stuff. We have not done that. We've wanted to do it for years. And, uh, but it adds up if you don't bring your own bikes. If you have your own bikes, I think it uh, makes a lot more sense. Well, it's just a lot cheaper, it still makes sense. So this is um, the river slash creek that goes through here is the south fork of the Coeur d'Alene River. And here it's all walled in so that uh, doesn't flood and cause problems with the town. See it there. But we're going to cross over here without filming people that don't want to be filmed. It's clearing up a little bit. Two days ago, or two videos ago, on Pete's Hill, I did one of my perambulation pontifications about how I kind of felt people felt disempowered and um, how you could still feel empowered with your friends and family even if you didn't feel empowered at a political level. And yesterday, or no, this morning, I read an article about how one, they've done studies that uh, one of the most significant factors in people that have a sense of well-being is, um, there, is a sense of belonging, which sort of fits in with what I was saying a little bit is, you know, you can feel empowered if you were having the interaction or effect with your friends and family. And that also, I think, plays into that sense of belonging, sense of community. Um, the study said that we feel a sense of community or sense of belonging as a country, as Americans, but not so much anymore within our own communities. And they had a lot of interesting reasons for that, um, or postulate, or uh, we call that hypotheses. Anyway, I thought I'd share that. Kind of want to get back to the perambulation pontifications. Like the idea of uh, having a positive impact in the world. <clears throat> rather than just rolling along for my own self. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Kindly. All right, so I'm gonna make a right on 7th. I like that uh, Stein bar sign. Very cool.
lovely little pocket park here. Ooh, I'm tempted to walk down that alley. Maybe we'll walk back down that alley. I do like a good alley. Coming up on Cedar Street. And obviously we have the city, old city hall and fire department. Interesting. Uh, and we're gonna, again, I, I've never actually explored through um, Wallace. So this is kind of fun for me too. Love these old buildings. They are a little run down, could use a little love. But of course that takes money. There is a hotel here, or no, a museum called the Bordello Museum. It's currently closed, but my interest is piqued. This is the Oasis Rooms, Lucky Horseshoe Bar. That looks interesting. Here's the Blackboard Cafe. That looks pretty fancy and nice. And of course, the Wallace Corner Hotel over here with the big, uh, looks like non-functional balcony, but still pretty cool. Silver Corner, Lux Rooms. All right, we're gonna go down here a little bit further. Uh, and then cut right, and maybe come back, go by the Wallace, I think it's the uh, Depot Museum. This is pretty cool. Looks like it's a hotel. Maybe just a cafe or bar. It's for sale. Fonks. So here's some mountain bikes. People from Montana came over to do some mountain biking. So Sierra Silver Mine Tour and Trolley Tours. Uh, that's what Traveling Mel and the boys are doing at 2.30. So I told Little Fib, we're gonna go straight a little bit further before we cut right. We're back to Fifth Street. One of the things I wanna show you guys, oh, I see Traveling Mill over there now, is the Stardust Motel. Awesome, super kitschy. I love it. This is the Elks Lodge. Let me go back here into one of these little neighborhoods. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, over to the left here is the United Church of Christ Congregational.
And off to the right here is the post office. <clears throat> Here's the Episcopal Church. Oh, or maybe it's a museum now. The Barnard Stockbridge Museum. But what I really want to look at are these cute houses along here. I avoid getting run over by cars. <clears throat> we, I do want to say one thing. So yesterday it was 90 degrees in Livingston where we live. We came from there this morning. Today it's supposed to be a high of 55. Had a bunch of rain come in uh, today and the temperature last night dropped like 30 degrees in an hour. It was really nice. A lot of these quaint, well-kept homes. I think a big part of it actually are these trees. I've said this before. Um, that, in my opinion, uh, big, full, mature trees make a huge difference. Um, well, look at this place in a city. It just psychologically. And now, the big one of the big things they've been talking about this summer is how. Uh, it cools cities and how poor areas don't have many trees. And so they're, uh, you know, sometimes 10 degrees hotter than the places, the wealthier areas that have trees. And that makes life that much harder, makes people that much less healthy. Um, so somewhere near here is the Pulaski Trail to the Pulaski Tunnel. Uh, if any of you have done any kind of outside of trail work or that sort of thing, you may have heard of a Pulaski tool. I think his name was Ed Pulaski. He was a, one of the early Forest Service people in the area. Um, and he invented that tool. And he kind of got, after the burn, he was sort of maimed, disabled and uh, never really got full compensation for it. Never, can't remember if he chose not to, to license or to get money from his invention of the Pulaski tool, uh, or if they just used it without his permission and kind of screwed him over. Uh, that was in that book, The Big Burn as well. But uh, anyway, he had a hard time of it after that big burn. Building. Look at this. That is. I don't know what style that is. It's interesting. It's kind of cool. Not sure I like the dark brick, but. Love this neighborhood. We are on Cedar Street. Gonna make a right on second. We're approaching Interstate 90 again, a couple blocks away. Here's Pine Street. Kind of want to go another block. Here's the St. Saint, Saint Alphonsus Catholic Church. All right, I'm going to go another block and then we'll loop around and about as needed. There's another creek here. It's been <clears throat> channeled in, I assume for flood control and erosion control. 
We'll go up there. Little pocket park here with a slide and swing set. That's nice. Somebody's, what are these called? Hydrangeas? These aren't hydrangeas. These are, what are these things called? These flowers here. Anyway, somebody's maintained baskets along here. That's nice. This makes a, all little things like this make a difference in a community. Livability of a community, of a place. A crossover. So off the left, I'm seeing a sign for the Wallace Inn, which is a hotel. There's a couple, you know, I passed a couple of hotels downtown. There's also several restaurants down there. And then there's a couple uh, sort of chain style modern hotels as well, just on the outskirts. Oh, I love this Jeep. Climb like a Willis in four wheel drive. Um, I learned how to drive stick on one of these. My dad's cousin had one and uh, an old army Jeep. And uh, that thing would go almost, would almost climb a wall. It was amazing, it would go anywhere. Looks like a school up here. Love these mountains. Now I can't get that dead song out of my head. Right, we're going to come up here and make a left on Pine Street. This is, I believe, 6th. No, 3rd. Totally went the wrong, wrong direction there. This is 4th Street that we're crossing here. Yet another church. This is... Hmm. Just says prayer station. I don't know. Maybe it's no longer a church. It's kind of pretty though. Current community food bank, though. Ooh, here's the Stardust Motel. Cool sign there. It gets even better. Kind of looks like an old school.
<clears throat> we have a sign on the back here that says best burgers and huckleberry shakes on I-90. We went through St. Regis today. We go through there a lot, it's on I-90. And I commented that <laughs> there's not a lot there other than a couple of gas stations that sell huckleberry shakes, but they get slammed with business. They're always crowded. Don't get me wrong, the shakes are good. Look at this awesome signage. Super fun. And then this little uh, flying saucer thing. <laughs> That's super cool. Uh, that's awesome. I'm gonna poke my head in here. Somebody had fun making that, for sure. The other thing I want to go over is this awesome old bus. And something else over there. Drive in Cindy's, the Slab Meat Company. Huh. This is such a cool old bus. So, uh, I don't know what that style is, kind of 20s, 30s looking. Uh, if you know what the style of that is, a design style, put it in the comments down below. Love that thing. That thing is sweet. Get a little closer. Maybe we'll make it into a thumbnail. And look at this thing over here. Looks like an amusement park ride. Uh, oh yeah, an old from Spokane's Natatorium Park. From 1889 to 1968. Oh, that's fun. And then you've got your... Uh, gas station, I-90. But we're gonna come back over here. It's called the Red Light, Hungry Red Light Garage. Best breakfast, I don't know. Signs everywhere, there's about 50 different signs in this little corner lot. Better look at the Stardust Motel. Gunworks and gear work. Told you they like their guns. That's kind of crazy. Not crazy, 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 just kind of wild. Huh? Interesting. Lucky Lanes. I guess that's bowling. The Jameson Dining Room and Saloon is this big building here. <clears throat> and I believe uh, coming up, other side of this uh, Hotel Albies gym bar and this uh, dumpster. Is the, uh, I believe the depot, the old depot museum. It looks like a train depot. For whatever reason. Ooh, City Limits Brew Pub. That way. That's kind of neat. So that must be the brew pub down there. 
but we're going to go back this way because I want to walk down that alley. So the Northern Pacific was one of the lines that came through this corridor. There's a, the beanery in Livingston was all built around the Northern Pacific marketing and stuff. It was built on the depot there. They've really done a good job of uh, maintaining this. Beautiful building. And maybe that'll be a thumbnail. Anyway, uh, it's also a museum. This is pretty cool, the Jameson Saloon. In fact, I'm just kind of uh, bumbling about in the middle of the street here. Just because I see so many cool things that I want to show you guys. I'm going to try and show you into here. Never really quite works, but it's kind of a cool bar, you know? love these old things man if you could uh bring in a few million dollars and rehab a bunch of these old buildings and bars that'd be pretty sweet all right so i think the alley is the next one look at this oh that's a sweet one too i mean i don't want to get too excited but i do like a good alley There's, we're walking by a bar here, and they're open, and there are people in there. Otherwise, I'd show you what was going on there. Do a little surreptitious filming. Probably not enough to tell you what it looked like, but I don't want to have another situation. The Fox and Hare Outerwear. It's like an outdoor star. Here's my alley. But I'm actually going to go this way. Sorry again. What the heck? There we go. Sorry about that. Well, what happened there? Alleys, I will say, don't usually smell that good, but I don't know, there's something intimate about them, revealing, I feel like, a little bit secret. Okay. Well, as I said, uh, Wallace is not a huge town. 800 people, 800 residents. Seems a little bit bigger than that, but I think a lot of these buildings are no longer fully occupied. Let's put it that way. Um, but it's still an awesome little town. Places to eat, places to grab a drink, 
uh, several different museums. Uh, and check out Traveling Mel's Instagram for that coming up. And uh, awesome, awesome history here. So I hope you enjoyed your walk through, or our walk through Wallace, Idaho. Um, we will be filming other places soon. So I hope you'll join us for those. Like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. But mainly come back next time because we love having you here and we'll see you then. Until then. Keep on stepping.